What's up, everybody? How's it going? I used to live in Salt Lake. I lived, yeah, I lived in Alpine. I know I was in the cut, but people kept coming up to my house and shit. I had to get out. <laughs> well, thank you for being here. What's it feel like to be back in Utah? It's a lot of white people. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Everybody's nice. Now, nah, man, so, uh, so, like, all right, so, we got the new comic book coming out. You're, like, you're, you're, you're a dad now. You're, you're writing books, still making music. Like, what, what else is next for you? Oh man, it's crazy that you asked that. I just did this film that I, okay, I'm gonna sound like a, a vain bastard when I say this, but I don't mean it. I wrote this uh, film that I starred in and directed and self-funded and produced um, after, yeah, Flex. It is kind of cool. Um, after I was, uh, uh, I, I was in this uh, Kevin Smith, so if you guys know Clerks, and it's a Jan Tompkins movie. It's a movie for Kevin Smith. Come on. Um, I somehow found myself, uh, well, the, the true story, sorry, not to just be The incredible true story. The incredible true story. Yeah, I have to say, I have to say. Is I was at Seth MacFarlane's house, because me and Seth MacFarlane are currently working on an album where he sings classic Sinatra songs, and then I flip them hip-hop style on my MPC. And, yeah, and I was at his house, and he was like, uh, just talking to me about cinema and film and all different types of stuff. And he was like, damn, you really know a lot about this. Like, have you ever wanted to act? And I was like, well, you know, I did a little stuff like that, but I've auditioned and I never felt like I could get the gig or this and blah, blah, blah. And he was like, you should just do it yourself and make your own movie. And I was like, yeah, I don't know. He's like, come on, you can do it, Bobby. <laughs> That's how he sounds. Exactly like Brian Griffin. <laughs> Julius, Julius, yeah. Anyway, so, so I was like, man, I, I don't know. Like, that's kind of crazy. And he's like, you should do it. We're getting lit. Okay, so I was like, I'm at his house. I'm not going to dox him and tell you where he lives, but I'm at the crib, and this, this motherfucker got a big house. Okay, and I'm, I'm in there. Sorry, kids. Anyway, it's logic. I rap. So. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so, so I, was, uh, I was there, and I was like, you know what? You're right. I think I'm going to do this, man. I'm going to really do it. And then I woke up the next day hungover, like, hey, I'm not going to do that. And a week later, Kevin Smith calls me and goes, yo, you want to be in my next movie? It's called the 430 movie. I was like, yeah, I would love to do that. I go. I shoot my scene. And Kevin's like, why don't you come to the house and I'll, I'll show you a cut of the film. I went there and before he even showed it to me, he was like, you're pretty good at this, kid. That's how he talks. <laughs> He's like, you're pretty good at this, kid. What are you doing about that? And I'm like, what do you mean? And, and he convinced me, truly, he was like, you should just do this if you really want to do it. And I was terrified and it was the scariest thing I've ever done. And I believe truly and creatively it was the best thing I've ever done as an artist. So it'll be out next year. It's called Paradise Records and it's going to be crazy. So that's what I'm working on. So what inspired you to get into comics, as far as uh, Bobby Boy comics? Uh, just because I was like super broke as a kid. <laughs> no, for real. Like I grew up, uh, for those of you who Maryland. don't know, in, yeah, Maryland, Section 8 housing, you know, guns, drugs, violence in the household. And uh, that just, it was never me. That's not what I wanted with my life. But back then I was so broke that I could never afford comic books. And I feel like I kind of missed out on that in my childhood. Um, and now I've just been kind of enjoying doing that and, and making some fun, some fun books. Yeah. So, um, what if, so a lot of your, um, first of all, let me just say from you man to man, I'm just really proud of you. Like a long time ago, I used to do hip hop, and so I, I could never do what you do, man, but I'm, I'm really just proud of you as an artist. You're completely in your own lane. You talk about whatever you want to talk about. One of my favorite, uh, I think it was a song with Nora Jones, you're sitting there talking about getting chubby and getting that, putting on dad weight and everything. I love these references right now. No, I mean, it's just- That's a deep cut. It's, it's dope. Well, first of all, like, Name some rappers that are doing records with Nora Jones. Yeah, no, exactly. exactly, exactly. If you don't know who Nora Jones is, get your life together. Okay? I have a song with uh, Frank Sinatra. Actually, exactly, posthumously, which is crazy. I, I re-released this song that I did on a mixtape where I sampled it, and the estate, his family, loved it so much when I re-released it that they gave me an official Frank Sinatra feature, which is really cool. So, so anyway, I'm not trying to flex, but you know, no, you're, you're flexing, you're, and you're supposed to. Just, just, just a little. Yeah, you, did, you, lived, you lived in Alpine, now you live in Salt Lake. You, it's, it, things, are, things are going up for you. And so, but um, you talk about being a father, you talk about mental health, you talk, I mean, obviously, hit song about um, uh, suicide awareness. And so, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, what, we see so much glamour and glitz and fake stuff in hip hop. How do you just keep it real? 
for lack of a better term? Um, I, you know, honestly, it's like, look at how I look being mixed, being black and white, and looking like the whitest motherfucker. Uh, <laughs> It's like, it's like you just gotta be yourself because coming into hip hop, you know, you would have people be like, no, you're not, or you're this, or you're that, or like, you like sci-fi and anime, like that shit is whack. Like people would go, and I would just continue to be me because I think that, you know, there's people like Kid Cudi, for example, yeah. who would touch on like, you know, depression and stuff. Yeah, shout out Kid Cudi. And you know, that was just something that I felt like I, I, I hadn't really heard a lot. And I was like, man, well, I feel like if I'm stepping into music and making music, I should talk about the things I don't really hear about. So I rap about video games and anime and, you know, adult swim shows and just like all th different types of stuff that I was interested in. And I think because of that, it's like, what other rapper are you really going to find that could kill it at, you know, comic conventions? You know what I'm saying? I mean, when you guessed it on Rick and Morty, I remember like that, that still blows. Remember, anybody remember that episode of Rick and Morty? Yeah. Somehow I was in a room and uh, Justin Roiland had hit me up and then Dan Harmon was there and, and he was just like, yeah, man, you should like rap and be a part of this. I was like, for real, are you serious? So then uh, they showed me like a really rough animated version of the episode. Yeah. They just gave me some key things to talk about and I was just like, no, no. And then that was it. And I don't know, that was a song. And yeah, no, no. No, no, indeed. But yeah, it was super fun. So, um, you've done a lot of albums, obviously, um, a lot with Def Jam. What has it been like? Like Your last two albums have been released independently, correct? Yes. And so, what, can I just say, first of all, do you know how many... I've done a lot of these, and sometimes I'll be with moderators who don't know what the hell they're talking about. And I just want to say thank you for doing your research. Okay? Thanks so much for coming. Well, after you answer that question, I'll tell you why. I won't say easy, but I feel good. Talk Wait, I already forgot the question. All right, man. Like, so releasing, so you released a lot of your albums on Death. Oh yeah, yeah, the last two. Well, what has it been like to release your albums independently and not being a, a, a system? Yes, there we go. Yeah, yeah, I say it, yeah. yeah. Say it. The cool. I'll tell you this: like being on Def Jam, I always had creative freedom because I would just, you know, like tell them to, you know, kick rocks. <laughs> like, no, like no matter what they would try to say. Like I remember doing the Incredible True Story. You know, and I'm about space, and they like didn't want me to do it, and I was just like, "Fuck y'all," and I just did it. Anyway. You know what, I'm saying? Like, what are you talking about? So I thanks. So I always had, um, I always, I always had that mentality of like nobody's gonna tell me what to do with my art. Not even fans. I make my art selfishly. I make it for me, and I make it because I like it and I enjoy it. And Alan Watts said, "Anything you can be interested in, you will find others who are." And I think there's some people in this room who like what I like, and that's who I make it for. So I'm making it for me. Yeah, you got the tea. You got the tea. Yeah, we got different flavors. We got, we got some green tea. Let's see what Which one it is? I love you. Yeah, shout out Tea Man. It's my boy Tea Man. It's funny though, because he's bringing me tea. So it's not, he's not like Tea Man. He's not like the Tea Man. Like it's like Tea Man. It did catch me off guard. <laughs> yeah, anyway. Um, so I uh, I would say that hasn't necessarily changed, but the, the cool thing about everything being independent is it all comes out of my pocket. Yeah. As before, uh, you know, where I had a budget through Def Jam and like they wouldn't pay artists. Like I'd have to like hunt them down to pay producers. Yeah. Like it's a really, it's a messed up system. And now it's like if somebody comes out and I work with them, I'm just like, here you go. Thank you for your, thank you for your service. <laughs> anyway, yeah. No, uh, first of all, I do want to let people know that those who want to ask questions, please form a line because we're going to open the floor up to questions. So make sure, yeah. I want to yeah, be chill about it too. Don't yeah, be, don't be getting this. We do it like Black Friday. You run in and try to get a TV or something. Yeah. Just and keep it chill. I do appreciate y'all lining up because that lets me know what. Um, and if you could, when you're when you're in line, just make sure that you kind of take a take a knee so that other people can see behind. So if you could, just kind of either sit on the floor for the time being. So you're not like, floor, God damn, for real? I mean, well, just at least so the other people in the back can see. You know? Oh, yeah, I see what you're saying. I'm just trying to do crowd. Control. Yeah, sit on the fucking floor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> see, I get to say it polite. He gets to say it the exact way that I need to say it, but I won't say it. So thank you, I appreciate it. Now, all right. Who remembers the first time they heard like? 
I, I personally want to share with you my one the first time I heard you. It was I was uh, I was on Spotify, mm. and uh, this was like maybe ten years ago. Damn, I'm old. Brother, I'm older than you, okay? <laughs> yeah, but you actually look black, so you look better than me. <laughs> you look good. great, you look great. When I, I tried. No, but the first time I was driving down to Draper, uh, as, yeah, no, and um, I heard Buried Alive for the first time. Man. Oh, wow. And so, and my son, who's somewhere in the back, yeah, there he is, he's got a question, but I oh, don't know. How old is your son? He's 17 years old. Damn, you are old. No, I'm just Yeah, no. <laughs> No, but um, I remember I was going through a lot of personal stuff at that particular time. So when I heard, tell me how you feel, I feel like the grass is green and everything I feel is unseen. Yeah, so like, I really appreciate that song. I mean, that to me, that was the first, like, that was one of your first major songs. Yeah. And that was, I think that was like the perfect introduction as I looked at your discography and see how you've grown as an artist and how you were addressing mental health issues very early on in your career. And now, you, 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 I just love, Bro, I'm just proud of you, man. Thanks. Like, I'm just proud of you, man. I appreciate it, bro. Okay. No big problem, just, just proud. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. It's been a weird, it's been a weird couple of months for hip, for hip hop, if you know what I'm talking about. Like, no, no ditty, but I'm just saying. It's been a weird, it's been a weird week for hip hop, so it's, dope, it's just dope to see an artist that is, represents truth and honesty in the game. So that's no, all I'm If saying. there's one thing that I want to make very clear after you said that, <laughs> and I know, and I really appreciate that. I'm being serious. All right? I was never a no Diddy freak off. <laughs> First of all, congratulations on finally doing Ultra 85. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Best album of the year by far. That's sweet. Uh, I don't know about that, but I appreciate it. Thank if, you. If, I think it is. <laughs> Shit, tag it. Okay, what are we going to say? Um, if you, I'm excited. Can I just say I'm so happy to be here today? I mean, man. Yeah, so travel back to young Bobby at any age, which age would you choose to go back to and which song would you show little Bobby and why? Damn, that's some deep <laughs> shit. <laughs> well, first song of yours, song yeah, of yours. Yeah, yeah, first of all, let me just tell you that yeah, uh, I used to, when I was like an adult, I mean, I'm still an adult, it sounds like Mark Zuckerberg, like, I'm human, I'm not human. He said some weird shit or something. Anyway, um, I used to wish that I could go back in time and like uh, kind of be there and like play with blocks with myself as a baby because I was like so neglected. And then I realized once I had my children, like I have the opportunity to do that, which is like really cool. And I know that seems kind of random, but that's just a kind of caveat off of what you're saying. So uh, what would I show little Bobby? Um, Damn, that's a hard ass question. Whichever one just lets him know I'm like real rich and successful and everything. <laughs> uh, you can choose an album as well with that. Um, probably No Pressure, because that was like the, the height of uh, everything that I had achieved and then kind of willingly walking away from the monotony of the business. Uh, and there's such a message uh, in the fact that like um, goals and attaining them and things that we can achieve and money and material, like that's nice. But that is truly not what is most important. So yeah, I'd, I'd love for him to hear that. Thank you. As far as, um, as, far as what's been important, you walk it, like, can we talk quickly about just uh, walking, you know, retiring? I remember when you announced that, like, walking away for a little bit. What, what did you get? What perspective did you gain from that? I mean, I just wanted to focus on being a father. I wasn't like forever trying to chase being 25. I like my wrinkles. I like my thinning hair. I like, because these, these are things that a lot of people would never even get to see. Mm. You know what I mean? So it's like, I mean, it sucks when my back be hurt and shit. That's like, <laughs> besides that, um, I more so, I thought, I thought I wanted to retire, but I realized that I had wanted to retire once again from the monotony of the industry and the kind of BS on that side. And when I realize all I have to do is not do that. Like there's fans I'll see, some of them don't even realize like Ultra 85 just dropped or I'm doing this or that or whatever the case may be. And there's a few reasons why. One, because I'm not super on social media all the time, even though I post more on I have to burn a book. Okay, so <laughs> but 
40, anyway. Um, and uh, the other thing is also the algorithm and where we are uh, in social media, right? So many things are pushed on us. So I spent a decade of my career uh, being blessed enough to amass millions of fans all over the world, uh, and then through uh, greed and companies and all this, this algorithm has been created where the people you follow, you don't even necessarily see, mm. which is insane. Um, and I don't know what the fuck I was saying, but the internet's whack. All right, what's this, what's this question? Let's go. What you got? So I like to think deep when it comes to YouTube. Generally. Do you? Yes. I'm more. Yo, on... let's lift that mic up. Yeah, yeah. Yo, lift that shit up. There we go. You good? Yeah. You're great. You're I great. Think so. Love it. All right. So uh, when it comes to the deep thoughts that you feel with the industry, where we're going, what we're seeing with a lot of these new artists coming in, and everything like that. What is it that you personally want to see with these new artists coming out, with evolution of like progression with music, with the sound, everything like that? You know what's crazy? That is such a good answer or question, and I feel bad for my answer, which is I don't give a shit. Like, I, I used to care so much about what's going on and other people and this and that and that. All I can do is control myself and mm. what I'm doing, so I'm more so excited about all the music and film and all this other shit I got coming out, you know what I mean? And I don't mean to sound rude or like I'm all about me, but I just, I, I think that my, my mental state cleared up so much more when I stopped looking at others, comparing myself to others, worrying about others, wishing others would do this or not this or not that, and I just looked inward and looked at myself and was like, all I can do is control that, so that's what I'm gonna focus on. Thank you for that question. Yeah. My friend here, what's up? Swag. Uh, since we're on the topic of, you know, what was your first song? Hey, step to the mic, homie. Oh, sorry. Yeah, there you go. Since we're on the topic of, you Too know, close. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> since we're on the topic of what was our first song, mine personally was back in high school, uh, 3 a.m. Oh. And, uh... 5 a.m.? Huh? 5 a.m.? 5 a.m., yeah, sorry. You fucking up. <laughs> no, I was like, wait, what? I didn't because I was listening to it after in the morning. Okay. Uh, I, don't I still don't believe you. I think you're saying face. <laughs> no, no, no. no, no okay, okay. Five a.m., five a.m., classic. No, I started yeah. because yeah. I was, you know, late at night, I was just listening to music, listening to, you know, whatever. And for me, your music was a real big impact because it felt like you were a very young, up and coming artist. And it felt like, at least for me, you know, I was always wanting to know what do I want to be in life, and my question to you is: Now that you're talking about making films, um, with your novel that came out, Supermarket, are you looking to make that into a film? Oh damn, that was a really long way to ask that question. Yes, uh, but I like it and I appreciate it. Uh, uh, yeah, you know it's really funny. I did I've done this deal for that film, uh, and I won't get into who was going to play the lead. But I did this deal with uh, Paramount Pictures, and they gave me a lot of money to have like a first look option on it. Uh, and it was about to happen, and then it didn't. And I think that was another reason uh, why I was kind of—I I found myself a bit uh, dis disheartened um, by by Hollywood and that that whole aspect. And you know, kind of having a lot of moments like that uh, deterred me from wanting to pursue a career in film. And uh, I'm glad that I'm, I'm finally taking it into my own hands, and I believe that's one that I will do. Uh, on my own, so I appreciate that question. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Young Robin. Um, what was your favorite album you've ever made? Damn, I just got asked this question. Um, the Incredible True Story is my favorite album that I've ever made because of where I was in my time, uh, in my life, and you know, feeling like I couldn't, um, once again, like I said, be myself, shout it out. Yeah, uh, feeling like I couldn't be myself, feeling like I, I um, needed to create my own world. And, you, and when you when you listen to the you know incredible true story, if you haven't, you, you know, it's about these two guys um, who are basically looking for a habitable planet. To me, that habitable planet was a safe space of my own. Um, so I think that's why that's my favorite one. Thank you for that question. Thank you. What's up? You nervous as shit? So, sorry. Oh, no, you're good, don't worry about it. Um, so thank you for giving me an artist to be able to relate to, watch anime. You put me on all the Quentin Tarantino movies, Cabo Viva, so appreciate you. No problem. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, my question is, what song frustrated you the most? Wait, is that Yoshi? 
Wow. The whole room just turned around. Just went, man, you're the one there. All right, I'm sorry. Please, please ask the question. Uh, something that has never been said at a, a hip hop uh, Q&A. Yeah. All right, please. Uh, what song frustrated you the most when writing and recording it? Oh, uh, Game Related. Get game Related, you say what? Gonna get the... Yeah, yeah, so it goes like this. Get down or lay down, hit you with the beretta, you better stay down, straight shots in the playground, living how I'm living with the light that I'm giving anybody, just ride up with me, I'm riding with him. Show me the enemy and I'ma hit him the second I hit him, I get him, I hit him with a damn, ain't no need to pretend I'ma never do it, I knew it already, but do it, I do it for the street, for the fan, for the life, anybody else, I'm in. as well um, and it was phonetically one of the hardest things I've ever had to do it was I, it took me hours and hours and hours and hours and hours to do it um, funny enough is there are songs that are actually way harder than that like homicide yeah. fuck rap bustin like an addict with a seven got a man gonna add it any ready for anybody to butt back or every time I don't want you how we even nobody can lie even suicide no fuck that Bobby Flynn Vanity Sea Killing some coffee for you man this lady you need a baby fun like a chicken 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 some shady more brady some four men in the mouth but it is difficult but thank you very much, guys. All, all the all the years of, of, of practicing and even working on uh, you know doing gang related live really helped with that. So, there you go. Thank you. I'm gonna try to answer these really quick because I'm trying. I, I don't want you. I always feel bad when there's people at the end and don't get to ask questions. Hello. Hello. You're the uh, boss. Thank you. My question is, what is your favorite Quentin Tarantino movie? Wow, it's funny. I used to get that uh, question all the time, and I would never answer it because it was like a fun thing. Um, but it is Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. It is. Um, for personal reasons, you know, Rick Dalton feels like a has been, or this or that, or that, or that. There was a time when I felt like that. At, in, in my career, even at the height of my career, where I'd be like in an arena, and there's 20 plus thousand people, and I'm like, I'm not shit. And it's just like, that's, that's what the world does. The world tells us we're not good enough, cool enough, this enough, that enough, whatever, and I am enough, and everyone in this room is enough. And that that uh, watching that movie really let me let me know that and it became my favorite. But before that, it was Kill Bill. Fire one or two. Oh, it's one movie. Yeah, it's one movie. Let's fight about it. It's one movie. We'll make sure. Hello, Spider Man. What's your favorite tattoo? Oh, I got your mom's number right now. <laughs> Children's initials, uh, LB for Little Bobby and LD for Leon David, right here on the side of my face. I look like I'm in a gang. I'm just a nerd. Um, what's up? What's up? What's up? What's happening? What's happening? Eh, not much. I'm in Utah. Nothing exciting. Oh, okay. Nice. Okay. All right. All right. So, <laughs> throughout, throughout the career of your albums, you have had many prolific voice actors and actors in general on your albums, like, you know, the one and only Steve Bloom, the Elizabeth Tyson, you know, God. <laughs> How did that come about? That's a great question. Uh, I'm a big fan of a gentleman named Orson Welles. Orson Welles is, uh, you know, most notably known for uh, his film career in Hollywood. But before uh, motion pictures, he did a lot of things called radio plays. Radio plays are like movies for the mind. Back before television, um, you know, you turn on your TV, or excuse me, your radio and listen to these movies for your ears. And I was always a big fan of that, and I wanted to do that. And what's really crazy is I'm sitting on one right now, which is insane. Like, an all-out epic. Rooster it King. takes place in 1863 about a runaway slave. It's kind of like Rap Django, and I have ep some of the craziest voice actors um, it stars Phil Lamar, uh, who's a wonderful star, and uh, also Morgan Freeman is one of those. Uh, so it's going to be crazy, man. It's a western, and I'm excited. So that's awesome. Yeah, it's going to be crazy. Oh, I'm excited for it. I'm always ready to see it. I love that. Yo, make some noise for this one. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to piss my pants. You know when you really got to pee? That's me right now, but I'll be fine. Let's go. I won't ask you about that. Okay, yeah, please do. Uh, All right, hurry up. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I wanted to ask you, we had a moment there I mentioned. Um, we did have a moment earlier. earlier. We did. It was fantastic. Look at me in my eyes. Uh, Whoa, so, shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, we were 
were talking about, uh, one of my favorite things you've done recently is logically speaking. Uh -huh. Like, if you guys haven't listened to his podcast, you need to go back. You think you know Kevin Smith, you think you know Bobby Lee, really opens up enough. So, any plans for a second season of it? Oh, what a great question. We are working on the second season right now, and it's a little more, yeah, yeah, yeah it's a little more like feasible in the sense of having such major guests on all the time is like a lot of work. You know, I got Seth MacFarlane, I got Neil Druckmann, the creator of Last of Us and Uncharted. I got so many people on that first season that's already out. And so this season is going to be more just like talking. I want I want the listener to feel like they're my homie sitting on the couch with me. Uh, my co-host T-Man, the wizard over here in the corner, is going to be joining in that season too. Um, so yeah, and I want to do it. I'm just, we've already done like a gazillion episodes, and we're just getting them all lined up, and we're going to release them weekly. I'm very excited. Anyone you would mention that you're going to interview on that? No. Okay, goodbye. I love you guys. You get me. Thank you for being here first off. Thank you. I'm so jealous of that hairline. Damn, I should have said that. Got that bang. Okay. Yeah, let's talk in the What's the best advice you have on just up and coming artists really trying to differentiate themselves from just the fodder in the industry and a lot of this just kind of, you know, media related, media related music. What's the best way to really do it? differentiate yourself and, you know, uh, well, stay with that? I don't know. You know, it's a hard question. Like, I, I started out making super raw hip hop music, uh, still very musical, but music. And then after 1 800, I was like, there's a million eyes on me. And then after that, I, saw, I was like, man, I want to make pop trap music and make a lot of money and have fun and, and just make happy music. But then I did that and people were like, you're selling out, your music's not the same, you're this, you're that, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I'm doing fuck, I'm rich. Right? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I'm having a good time. Like, I'm, I'm spreading a message of peace, love, and positivity. I don't, give, I don't give, give a damn. You know what I mean? So, but I did that and then I flipped a switch and I was like, I don't want to do this shit anymore. And then I did No Pressure, I did Vinyl Days, I did uh, College Park, I did All Traded Five and I found myself into more of a very, like kind of back down to earth hip hop. And now I'm at a place right now where <coughs> you want you want Instagram right now, blast the music. <coughs> Tremaine, everybody boo this man, boo him. <laughs> no, we love forget. Anyway, forgive. what I was saying, <laughs> shit. What I was saying was, is um, it was a it was a, a time in my life of ebbs and flows and knowing what to do. And trust me, this will make sense. But what's crazy is, is that when I doubled down on the quote unquote real hip hop, if you will, right, the NPCs and the beat machines and the, the straight raps and the ultra 85s, I made the less, least amount of money I've ever made in my career. Now, we don't do it for the money, but what does that say? It's like, okay, it says that if you look at Spotify and all the top playlists, it's all just a bunch of turn up stuff, a bunch of pop music. There's nothing wrong with that, you know what I'm saying? I don't think we want to be at a party with our friends like, you know, I got a kid on computer, you're like, whoa, man, I'm trying to listen, and I got my dinner, you know, whatever, you know what I mean, trying to vibe. So I would say, if you're an artist trying to come up and not be a part of the folly, you better keep a job. You know what I'm saying? Now, if you want to try different things, that doesn't mean that you can't do something organically from your heart and for yourself. Um, I'm just looking at time. Much appreciated. Yeah, thank you so much. Shout out to your pressure. I no, appreciate you. Man. Thank you very much. I like that mustache. Thank you. Okay, so. Can you talk to Mike? Oh, of course. Yes. Yeah. Anything for you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Alright. I was just going to say. Can I get around the house? <laughs> with Ultra 85. Oh, fuck me then. What's up? With Ultra 85, you have Steve Bloom as Quentin Thomas and. Uh, for Kai Thomas, you have Kevin Rudolph. Um, if you were to ever make an Ultra 85 movie, who would be the dream cast alongside those guys? That's a real... Why do you gotta ask me such a hard-ass question like that? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I have no idea, man. Damn, I feel bad, but that's like some deep... I gotta like create a top ten list, figure it out, do a whole thing, cast. Damn, like who would I cast along? But you mean as those characters? No, no, no. Like other, the other characters in no, but the thing is, is like I wouldn't cast Steve and 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 uh, Kevin Randolph to play them. You know what I'm saying? Because if right. I do, if I'm gonna do that, I'd probably do a younger version, have them in their 30s, 40s, you know, something like that. Not like they're too old or anything like that. But right. it's like that's kind of the era that they're in 
It's because they're voice actors, right? So I mean, they're actors. I kind of always hated the term voice actor. Like that's all they can do. They're incredible actors, oh, yeah. um, but they can play any age, any style, any this that. Um, so yeah, but I hate the. To, this is like a very long-winded way of saying I don't know. It's okay. <laughs> it is okay. Thank you so much. Awkward. <laughs> Thank you. I'm not having fun. I don't know about y'all. That's good. Doing. Done, what is your favorite memory? Dang. <laughs> or just any memory in general that you love? Oh man, I got one that I can't say. <laughs> My wife came to visit me one time, we was backstage anyway. Uh, one, one, one moment that I really love is uh, being on, on stage with Wiz Khalifa. Yeah, and because like he was such an idol of mine coming up, you know, so then to be able to co-headline a tour together and he's like smoking a joint and I have a drink of scotch and we're just vibing. I got he sent me a gift, it's like a friggin' like seven foot uh, paint or poster of that moment and it was a really beautiful moment. So yeah, there it is. Thank you, good question. Yo, what up? Um yo, what up? We got more water. My bad. I'm sorry. Well, if we're going to continue the, uh, the trend of like first Logic song, for me, it was definitely Walk On By and the uh, Welcome To Forever mixtape. I was in middle school when that dropped, but uh, uh, being yeah. also old, oh, <laughs> making me feel old right now. But like, being also from Gaithersburg, Maryland, I can tell right now you've been a big inspiration. Oh, right, yeah, like, I'm from Gaithersburg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what I know. Yeah, yeah. But being also, or uh, being a huge inspiration for like a lot of like DMV rappers, um, I always want to ask you, like, who's your top five rappers of all time? Like, who inspired you to what get into rap? What is with y'all asking me the deepest? I love it though. Let's see. All right, this is gonna be a hard one, though. J. Cole, right, J. Cole, J. Cole, Nas. Uh, damn, 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 damn. Uh, don't be saying stuff. Y'all trying to put is this, this top five dead or alive, or just top five dead or alive? Something I can ask both of y'all. Go ahead. My number one. My number one is is Black Thought for yeah, sure. That's Planet that's Express that's shit. Cool. That's a good one. Black Thought. Yo, my that's man got cool. the Planet Express ship on back there. I yeah, see you, bro. That's right. Anyway, I don't know. There's four. What, what you got? Black Thought is gonna be my. That's gonna be my personal. That's just. That's it. For those, if you Woo. if you if you've never listened to hip hop, one, you're kind of in a weird panel to be at. <laughs> but but everybody should take out your phones Thank and you. after this panel, see, look up Hot 97. Black Thought, 10 minute freestyle. And if he's not in your top five after that, I don't know what else, I don't know what else to tell you. But Black Thought. Black Thought. And, the roots. Um, I would say uh, uh, Nas for me, uh, Pac, because I'm from oh, the West Coast. Rakim. Rakim, because uh, Rakim definitely, because he's the math, like he's he patterned the whole flow and Big Daddy Kane, like yeah. as, as far as, so those are my personal. Anyway, good question. Thank you very much. Those Thanks, are some solid answers. Thank you for even asking me. I appreciate that. DMV, baby. <laughs> All right, so having a family and a Hey, are you tall? <laughs> Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. <laughs> He's so excited. He's like, I know! <laughs> All right, what? All right, so having a family and a rap career, how do you find a balance between the two? I just ignore my kids. <laughs> Uh, no, I actually go out of my way very hard to ensure uh, that I spend time with my family, and they, you know, they, they matter most to me. Uh, I've definitely left tens of millions of dollars on the table over the last few years by uh, deciding to spend way more time at home. You know, um, for example, weekends are just like family weekends. Obviously, I see my kids throughout the week. You know, it's like I'll see them in the morning, and I'll come stop in and do different things, and then we we'll eat dinner at night, and da da da. But like. That, those 48 hours, it's just me, my wife, and my kids. No business, no nothing, unless it's like insanely, ridiculously important, you know what I mean? Um, and nine times out of 10, it's not as important. So I, I do that, um, and I think I literally just put it on the schedule and abide by that schedule, so thank you. That's awesome, thank you. All right, let's right. think about this like the whole time I was away, it was a long ass way, but what would you say is the number one thing you had to develop as an individual to make it through the grind and get big as an artist? Uh, perseverance and um, sacrifice. 
And when I say sacrifice, no parties, no BS, no running around, no drugs, no alcohol. Uh, I mean, now we smoke weed and drink scotch, you know, I've earned it now. But nothing hard, nothing crazy like that. But I would say it's all about sacrifice. And I sacrificed my 20s, you know, I sacrificed the time in my life where a lot of people get to have fun and fall down. Um, and I couldn't, I didn't have the opportunity to do that because I knew I had the foresight and the goal. Um, and that was it. So it was a lot, basically it was just a lot of like staying inside, playing video games like a nerd and running ramps. Hey, there you go. appreciate it. Yeah, appreciate you, buddy. Out of just curiosity, are there any MCs by around the pause in this audience? Any MCs? Anybody who raps? Anybody. Just say, he said, kind of. What kind it's of kind of hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh? If you an MC, you an MC. So you gotta say that shit with your chest big dog. I rap. Okay, I'm just curious. All right, just let me write you. Yeah, so for uh, up and coming artists or people that are just getting into music, like, even yeah, that other dude was tall as fuck. You can bring that shit down. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay, there you go. Yeah, so for people who are just getting into art, uh, just becoming an artist or getting into music production, even rapping, anything like that, what is like a good method or a couple of methods to keep them on their feet? Because it's so hard. What do you mean keep them on their feet? What are you talking about? Well, it's uh, difficult for some people to just keep moving up and they like procrastinate. So what are some things? Oh no, fuck. Them. There you go. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, if they procrastinate, they're not they're not ready for this. Yeah. Go get a job. Fuck that. It's as simple as that. Yeah, it's as simple as that. Yeah. If you, if, you, if you have a dream, you should make it your everything. You need to wake up. You need to do nothing but constantly think about that thing. You know, whether it's a degree, whether it's a, a certain field that you want to go into, whether it's making a film. Like, I woke up every single day and just wrote and worked on scripts and acting and acting coaches and directing and all that, like I made it my entire life, and just like I did with them. If somebody's procrastinating, fuck them. There you go. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Right. Thank you for talking about it real quick. My man right here, I just want to say to you real quick and to anybody, if it keeps you up at night, that's the shit that you're supposed to be doing. Let's go. So. Wait, also, how much time do we have left? Because I want to make sure I get through as many questions. Yeah, let's, let's power through. When is it though? When is this over? When do we got to um, kick us out? What time do they kick us out? 6.20. You said 6.20? Oh shit, lightning like round. Come on, quick, let's go, come on. What was your inspiration about making the song intermission? And like what was your thought process? I was depressed and I was trying to get at it. Next question. Let's go. <laughs> What did you think of when were you like rapping? Because you went ten syllables per second. I did. <laughs> I didn't know that. Uh, it was my first rap that I ever wrote, and I actually think that the rap itself is really bad. And I'm just this kid, and I go, yeah, I'm ripping and living and striving. The killer, the ripper, he's calling what goes when he flows. And you know he's pursuing it, doing it, moving it, grooving it. But I, I, but I went, uh, yeah, I'm ripping and living and striving. The killer, the ripper, he's calling what goes when he flows. Yeah, he's pursuing it, doing it, moving it. Yeah, and I just did it like that. So. <laughs> All right, uh, hello, sir. This is inappropriate for a lightning round, but I'm gonna ask it anyway. Eight inches. What's a? Question number two was: I'm, I myself am a father. That's not Cat. That's my. That's my wife. You said that's Cat. I am that black. I'm with him. Let's go. Hurry up. Um, Father, father, what's a thought you've had uh, just about being a dad that's like something you never would have thought before you first met your kid? Uh, I never knew love like that existed. So that's a good, that's a good answer. Thank you. Say that one more time, closer to the microphone so I can hear you. Uh, what like uh, project would you like to be in or IP? Like, uh, yeah. What project or IP? What would you like to be in? Oh, shit. Like a game or? Uh, well, I was already technically in the uh, Cowboy Bebop universe, so it'd be super awesome to be in the Dragon Ball universe. Good question. Thank you very much. Oh, wow. Thank you. I appreciate you. All right. This is too tall. Hi. All right, let's go. We got a lightning round. We got like three minutes. What's your favorite fast food order? Anyway. Uh, pussy. Next question. Let's go. Who's your favorite artist you've ever worked with? Favorite artist I've ever worked with? Uh, damn, you fucked your mic up. You gotta put it back on there. Uh, 
Honestly, I, I, I'm not categorizing this by saying like anybody's better than anybody else, but working with Seth MacFarlane was incredible. So Seth MacFarlane. When was the moment you knew you made it? And have there been multiple? You know what's crazy? I didn't you know that I had made it until I retired. Because, I, I, because this industry, it keeps you thinking that you're not good enough, not good enough, not good enough. And when I stepped away, that's when I knew I had already, I had been made it like a long time ago. And I made it because I was, I was happy. You know what I mean? So good question. Let's go. Oh my God. Um, what's your favorite Pokemon? Uh, Charizard. I got that card too. I got the OG Charizard. Uh, what's up, Sonny? How are you doing? Oh, great. Uh, what is your favorite Kanye West album? Oh, Graduation. Keep it pushing. Hey, one of my favorite videos of you is uh, you destroying YG in a game of skate on the yes. board. Yes. So, do you still skate? Uh, no, I don't. No, I can still nolly flip. Too. I can nolly flip all that shit. I'm too old for that, man. Come on, keep on. Let's go. Let's go. Who's next? I was gonna say you featured um, Young Sinatra in Warm It Up. Would you ever feature Rap Man slash his raptastic companion rapper? You know what? That's a really good idea. We should actually remember that. It's a classic. Uh, it's a classic. I'll think about it. Thank you very much. All right, let's go. Come on. If you could have us go home and listen to one song, what song would it be? Whether for you want us to listen to it for the message or just because you love the song? <laughs> That's my song right there. That's ah. Yeah. That's me. Probably Fade Away. It's a very beautiful right. message on that. Good question. What's up? What's up? Is Doc D coming back for or what? Uh, he's kind of an asshole. I don't know. Let's go. What is your favorite D D class since you voiced a character in Box Machina, which oh, is a role um, show? I forget what I am. I'm not a human. I'm a something else. Oh, what? No, I'm some shit. Whoever's like big and strong and kind of can have new magic. It's been a lot. It's been like eight years since I played D D. All right. Good question. For the Ultra 85 book, did you have the story written already or like thought of, or did you just do it like last minute while you were writing? Hell no, I did not last minute. I, I was working on that thing for, I'd say, 10 years. Yeah. 10 years, so a lot, of, a lot of thoughts. Great question. Appreciate it. Did you ever know you were going to change lives when you started music? Hell no. <laughs> Man, that's really sweet of you. I really appreciate you even saying that. that oh, you can make me cry. I appreciate that. Thank you. Real quick, which um, celebrity are you fangirling over today? Mm, that's a good-ass question. Mm. Yeah, I'd say, yeah, yeah, Johnny Bosch. Yeah, 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 voice, yeah voice actor, yeah. That's, that's good. All right, so I'm asking my question for my DJ buddy. He's at a gig right now. Your DJ buddy's at a gig? What's his name? Omar. He came over and he signed his vinyl. Oh, bet. Okay. Um, so he asked, what advice can you give to artists who are having a hard time starting a song? Oh, don't overthink it and just make it and let it be really bad. <laughs> and then you do it and then you look at all the spots you can improve on. It's very simple. Nice. Hey. Hey, are you mixed? Are you mixed? What, you, what's your ethnicity? What's your ethnicity? <laughs> You're mixed with what? Black and white? Cold it. <laughs> I can see that shit. I got like radar for like mixed mother. Okay, let's go. Yo, I think ADHD with Joyner was fire. Is there a plan to release a sequel or anything further with him? Uh, yeah, we'll definitely work on music together. Yes. So he's a good guy. He's a nice guy. Cool, yeah. thank you. Yeah, thank you. Nice glasses. Again. Would you consider yeah. animating an Ultra 85 movie? Uh, no, because I don't do shit half ass. Somebody came to me and they actually asked me to do that and they were like, we'll give you $500,000. And I was like, fuck no. Like, it's, it's, I never do anything half, half ass, you know what I mean? So it's like, if I was going to animate that, you know how much it costs to, like, make a Kira? Like, that's what it's got to be. I'm not going to give you, like, a stick figure version, and it's like, oh, my God, what's happening? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, full I, 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 don't think I, I don't think I would. Unless somebody paid for it. It's $10. Okay. I'll, 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 I like that. Oh, my God, I'm going to flow. Okay, speaking of, uh, you know, not half ass and anything, 3.75 inch action figures, are we getting more? Are we getting bigger ones? Are we getting a whole line? What's the scoop with action? I don't know. I do. I've always wanted to make action figures. They're actually really difficult, and it's like pricey, and it's a whole long thing. So I'm glad we can start here, but there will be one. Eight inches. Great question. <laughs> yeah. So I'm a huge Uncharted fan. Which one would be your favorite? One, two, three, or four? Uh, my favorite is the fourth one, but my favorite is the second. I don't know how to explain it. It's like I love them both for different reasons. Oh, thank you. Okay. All right. Last one. Are you going to tour for Ultra? Are you aware you're wearing sunglasses inside? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm just kidding. Please, please tour for 85. You didn't hit the. You didn't hit here for the whiz and 
tour and like that was like the biggest heartbreak that you did. Yeah, but I, I was here on my last tour. Yeah, last we were totally here. Yeah, I want you to come for '85. Yeah, but did you come to the tour? Oh yeah, right here. We were here. I had a sign for yeah, my buddy's twenty-first birthday. They ripped it there. Oh okay. yeah, so sad. We just. I'll come back. I promise. For Please, thank you. <laughs> just for being here, thank you for your time, I know you gotta pee, but as, I thank you, I was a 20 year veteran in the military, I thank you for, thank for you what for you did, it. for suicide awareness, I truly thank you, I played that song for some fellow members of my team, as a father of a biracial child,